Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and this week I made a wall of flesh. I, um, I really didn't want to Photoshop that. So instead, I'm gonna make a 3D version because somehow that'll be better. Now the first step in making a wall of flesh is making a wall, and like all good walls, my wall's insides are made out of cardboard, layered up and held together with painter's tape. The cardboard will help the wall maintain a little rigidity while the painter's tape will hold the pieces together and cover up any of that unsightly edge. I can then set that to the side and grab myself a block of clay which I'll need to convert into a pasta sheet through the power of violence. To help my clay sheet adhere to the cardboard, I'll paint my IKEA-esque wall with a thick layer of bacon bond before wrapping the clay around my cardboard, then cutting off any of the excess. If I was a better man, I'd wrap it all the way around and make this model viewable from all angles, but that feels like a lot of work and I'm kinda lazy. So instead I'll just lean it against a wall and no one will ever know. Otherwise, once I've got a nice smooth grey cursed cake base, I can start the highly methodical process of poking and prodding divots into the surface, which will be my eventual assortment of eyes and mouths. Now I know the OG wall of flesh only has two eyes and one mouth, but I like to live life on the edge, so I'm gonna go with the more is more approach and just make like all of the eyes and mouths. Several of my mouths are massive and the cardboard is impeding my ability to elongate the throatal region, so I'll cut away any of the cardboard, then cover the sides in clay to hide the ugly exposed cardboard edge, as well as add a lump of clay to the bottom to fill in the hole and give me something to carve detail into. With my mouths and initial eye sockets sorted, I can set whatever this is aside and get to making some simple clay spheres. Of course, one baked eyeball isn't going to be enough, so I'll make a couple more. Finally, to double up my eyeball count again, I'll carefully rip these balls in half. And last, I've got enough eyeballs for my wall of flesh so I can start dropping these eye domes in place. Eventually, my cake is covered in eyes, so to build up the detail, I'll wrap each of the eyes in a little wormy dealy of clay and then blend it into the existing surface until I've got a bunch of half-buried eyes that I can carefully extract using a soft silicone shaper. Back to the bouche, I'll add some spiral throat texture with some small ball styluses so they look a little more throaty before jamming a metric ton of teeth into the gaping maws. Last week I made the Eye of Cthulhu, but my initial batch of big teeth were too small, which worked out well for me this week since it means I've got plenty ready to go. I can then gum up the gums a bit with some blobs of clay before adding eyelids to a bunch of the eyes, leaving several of them unlidded for maximum eyeball effect. Instead, I'll just wrinkle the skin around the eyes to help them stand out before moving on to texturizing the rest of the wall. I'll start by carving little trenches into the surface to help give the wall a bit of dimension and depth, then I can smooth out the edges so that it's nice and smooth before adding lots of random holes and gnarly details by way of poking and prodding. I was drawing inspiration from the Xenomorph and decided to add some big goopy veins which I'll add all willy nilly all over the entirety of the wall before blending them in so they look extra veiny and gross. Finally I'll take a teeny tiny stylus and carefully poke and prod each and every flat untextured section of the wall to make sure the entire surface has some sort of slimy texturing. Otherwise once that's finished it's time to celebrate with a jam jar of alcohol. The alcohol will help to soften the top layer of clay so I can smooth out any of the sharp edges, creating a softer, fleshier looking surface. Additionally, by applying it with a slightly stiff brush, I can impart some final texture on top until I've eventually got a gorgeous, cursed focaccia ready for the oven. Finally, my grey many-faced wall of flesh is finished and I can get to the colorizing, starting with a coat of blindingly white primer. However, it was at this point that I started to realize I probably should have planned this out. After priming, but thankfully before painting, I realized that I wanted to give this wall a roof, so I've rolled out a nice thin sheet of clay that I've cut to size using my wall for reference. Of course, the wall of flesh is found in the deepest, dankest cave, so I need my roof to be a rock, and the best way to get a rocky texture is with a rock. So once I've carefully and artfully applied my rocky texture to the underside of my roof, I can stick my wall in place and start to add the goopy fleshy fingers that the wall uses to move inexorably towards whatever unfortunate victim is in its way. 
I'll then blend these little tentacly fingers into the wall until they look like they were there all along rather than an addition I made halfway through the process because planning is hard. I also added a bit more to the bottom of the wall, but much less than the top since I don't need a roof. Otherwise, I think I'm actually finished now so I can peel it off the tray and reprime it all white again. Finally, I am finally ready for some fleshy coloring. I've decided to make my flesh wall with lovely reddish hues reminiscent of the autumnal weather we're experiencing today. You could of course make your flesh wall with whatever fleshy tones you want, but I happen to be an almost offensively pale white person, so I've chosen to make my wall with that in mind. Also, flesh is the stuff under your skin, so while my skin is the color of freshly mixed mayonnaise, the fleshy bits underneath have a decidedly redder hue. To achieve this coloring, I've coated the entire base with a dark red wash, then followed that with lighter pinks and purples, wet blending as I go to allow the still wet red beneath to blend together naturally. Once it's dry, I'll go over each of the eyes with a couple coats of white before doing the same to all the teeth. Once the eyes have dried, I'll give each of them a very thin, very red wash which should pull around the edges and make them look extra gross and infected. I can then add that same wash around the various holes in the flesh before giving the teeth an umber wash to make them look a little less pearly white. I'll use a circle cutter coated in black paint to mark out the eyes before painting them black and while I wait for the black irises to dry, I'll paint the rocky roof black and give it a few dry brushes in lighter gray to bring those sharper edges out. Once the eyes have dried, I can repaint the irises with a dark purple followed by a lighter purple for a bit of detail. I'll do half the eyes in purple and half the eyes in red. Some slightly thicker but still plenty thin red wash will give my eyes the ever important veinage and I can use a cotton bud dipped in black paint to make the pupils in the center. Otherwise that's the painting finish for this particular wall of flesh so all I need to do is give the entire surface a thick high gloss varnish which should help it look nice and slimy. Now the wall of flesh is found deep in the caverns below the surface above a lake of lava which means I need to make some lava which means I need to make a little acrylic mold for my resin. My plan at this point, which I'm making up as I go, is to make my lava out of resin so I can light it up from underneath using some LEDs. I've cut my acrylic sheet to size since I'm going to be using it as a base which I can attach all my pieces to, and I've also decided that I want a little hero facing down the wall, so they'll need something to stand on. Which I'll make out of this leftover chunk of foam snapped in half and glued back together. I'll then hack at it with a knife until it's got a slightly tapered shape, then I'll go to town with a pair of pliers until it looks like a poorly textured rock, which of course means we need to add some rocky texture. Eventually I've got a pretty good looking little stone outcropping. To protect and prime the foam, I'll give it a coating of Mod Podge mixed with black paint. I'll then cover that with a solid grey base coat followed by some grey dry brushing to highlight all the edges. This can then get glued to the edge of my acrylic sheet alongside a couple smaller rocks I made as well. Now my poor planning meant I had to snip the side of my wall a little short in order to fit the wall for the resin, which I've made by covering a strip of MDF and sellotape. A bead of hot glue on the underside should create a waterproof seal and it's time to add the resin. I've mixed up enough resin to fully cover the base, then I split them into three different cups and tinted them red, orange, and yellow. I'll start by pouring the red resin onto the base, making sure it gets into all the nooks and crannies before adding the yellow on top and haphazardly mixing it in until I've got lots of lava-y swirls. I realized the orange was superfluous, as the yellow and red mix to make orange anyways. A couple hours later, the resin has started to set, but it's still soft enough to be tacky, which means it's a great time to start adding little chunks of black rock. I made these by baking a little block of black clay and blitzing it in my blender. This then leaves me with lots of little broken chunks and fine black dust, which I can sprinkle onto the lava. I can then set this aside to cure while I make a teeny tiny hero. I'll start with a teeny tiny length of armature wire that I'll bend into a pair of legs and a looped upper body that then gets fitted into my sculpting handle and covered in clay. 
I'll then add a little skirt and build out the sections of the breastplate before poking lots of little holes into the skirt until it becomes a chain link skirt. I can then add some tassets and knee guards, followed by a tiny belt and some holes for future arms. I'll make the helmet on the end of a toothpick by squishing a little ball into a roughly helmet shaped shape and adding a teeny tiny visor to the front. Then I can stick it onto the tiny gorget I made earlier and add a couple little arms. Now these arms are a bit thick so I replaced them with some smaller arms and decided that they should have a no worry attitude with one hand on a belt and the other holding a little pickaxe over the shoulder. I then added some big round pauldrons and used a little length of wire to properly position the hand. Once they've been baked, I removed the wire and added the bottoms of the sabatons. To paint my hero, I'll give the skirt and under armor a coat of black before painting the rest of the armor with a silver metallic paint. I'll use a little gold to add the trim and detailing, then paint the belt and coin pouch brown and the little potion and chest emblem red. Finally, a full coat of thin black wash will add some weathering and shading, and I can add the pickaxe over the shoulder and a little sword on the back. With that, our tiny hero is finished and ready to face down the wall of flesh. Speaking of which, the resin is cured so I can pop the sides off and appreciate the first time I've poured resin and it hasn't gone tits up. And once the moment's passed, it's time to figure out the lighting. As it turns out, I've had this LED strip sitting on my shelf just waiting to be used. I don't know what it's from, and I don't know what it's for, but today's the day. To fit the LEDs, I've made this shallow box that should fit perfectly under the lava, and hopefully will fit the LEDs without issue. Fortunately, the sticky bit is still sticky enough to stick to the base, so I looped it back and forth until it filled the entirety of the box. I then used a little hot glue to run the USB wire out the back, so I could fit the wall of flesh on top. Finally, with the wall in place, I can turn the lights on and appreciate the subtle glow of my beautiful red lava reflecting off the gnarly, fleshy wall. Now the bottom of the base is a bit of a mess, so I'll cover everything with a coat of hole filler, then once it's dried and sanded, I can paint it black so it's a little less obvious. All that's left to do then is fit my hero in place, and that's us done, and on to the glamour shots. As always, a big old thank you to the fine folk over on Patreon who continue to support this channel and a special hey how are you to the newest of them, Ammo No, Nappy Joe, Alex, Bailey Shears, Mr. Thornberry, Jay Winters 85, Anna Ricklick, have fun pronouncing that Adam, I Hyeonchen, and happy birthday Jack the Destroyer. You are the many eyes and mouths that make up this fleshy wall of a channel. If you like this video, then remember the real video doesn't start until you defeat the wall of flesh and progress to the next world tier. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.